Hey guys and welcome back. Uh, in this video uh, we're going to be going over some dictionary examples. If you are uh, not too sure about how dictionaries work then have a look at the previous video which I explained over about the basics and uh, some of its methods as well as uh, some of the loops. All right. So dictionaries can be useful in many situations so we're going to go back to our fruits example where we had a list of fruits and uh, the account uh, stored inside a csv file so we have seen this uh, similar code before for sets but in that one we were only counting a unique number of fruits but what we want to do is count the total number of uh, fruits uh, inside uh, for example if this is a stock uh, and then accumulate as we go along. So uh, this is the code over here. I just renamed it to main2. And what we're going to do is do some file handling here. Uh, read the file, uh, open it, uh, and we are going to expect a, a fruit and count separated by a comma. Okay. And for each line, what we're going to do is if fruit in fruit counts so that means we if we already created a fruit count inside a dictionary then we're just going to append by plus equals and then convert this into an int otherwise we're going to create a new entry because we haven't seen this fruit before and then um, print this out so if we run this and call main2 then we have the fruits.csv uh, and we can see that uh, it has accumulated all the fruits. So where's my fruits? Fruits are here. Okay. Ah, here, the main function. Okay, so this is our list of fruits. Uh, as you can see, we have some duplicates uh, like apple 1, apple 5, uh, another apple here too. And if we accumulate all of this together, for example, for the apple, it's 2 plus 5 plus 1. I should have total 8. And that's exactly what we have counted. So what we're going to do is, uh, what this program did was uh, go over all the items and um, uh, combine if there are duplicates. Okay, so that's a, a possible way, um, but we can probably do this uh, better, for example, using the get method. So if you remember the get method of the dictionary, if uh, the key value exists, then it's going to return the value associated with the key. However, if the key doesn't exist or gave us nothing, then you can insert a second parameter and it's going to return that instead. So uh, what we have here is, let's create this a bit longer. So exactly the same file handling, but inside the follow, we no longer have a, we no longer have the, uh, the if statement. We don't need to use the if statement. Rather, we just say the fruit count of fruit equals uh, fruit counts.get fruits or zero. So this means uh, we either look up if it exists, uh, is we're going to return that, otherwise return zero. So let's think about the existing case. If it does exist, then we get the number that's currently stored inside the dictionary. And then what we're going to do is add the new count. We're just going to add it onto what we had. If we didn't have the fruit before, what we do is this side of the equation is going to be 0 plus an integer and remember how we create a new dictionary you just have to provide the key value that you want to create so this way either it's going to create a new one with 0 plus the new count or it's going to get the new value and add it on to uh, the one that we are reading now and update uh, the existing uh, existing dictionary uh, value here Okay, and uh, now let's run this main3, okay, fruits.csv, 
So in this particular one, instead of just uh, printing the dictionary, um, we can put it nicely, even sort it, right? Sort the fruit dot counts. So now it's alphabetically sorted uh, by the key um, value. So A comes first, B, and then so forth. So we can tidy up uh, bits and pieces, uh, which does the same thing. And it's really a matter of uh, deciding which method will be um, the best to use uh, in different scenarios. So sometimes if the if condition has to be a bit more complex, then it might not make sense to use this get method uh, to simplify the if condition to check whether the key exists or not. Okay, so this is the output where we have now made it a bit more nicer and of course you can use some string um, formatting to make this even uh, to look even nicer okay so the next example is about inverting the dictionary so normally what we have is a unique key and then uh, a values that can be duplicate uh, amongst uh, multiple keys uh, but sometimes we want to uh, sort by, for example, frequency of what we've seen inside our stock and then uh, list it based on the stock size. So what we can do is, in this instance, we're going to change the, the uh, values and keys um, to become the others, right? So the values will become the keys and the keys will become values, okay? So what we need to do is first read in the file and first construct our uh, dictionary so our first uh, eight lines also is going to be exactly the same as what we have seen before and then what we're going to do is invert um, our dictionary so we're going to create a inverted dictionary and what we can do is go through each pair and read in the value and assign that as the key and if we already have that count, then what we would do is just append the, the old key as the new value, okay? And if the count, the, the old count is, um, doesn't exist, then we can create a new entry into our inverted dictionary. All right, so let's have a look at its uh, example, which is main four. So you can see that uh, these first few lines is exactly the same as before other than the printing out and this invert is the essentially what's converting uh, from the key value pairs to value key pair as the new dictionary of key value pairs okay so the code is pretty simple you just have to go over and basically you're doing something similar as we did before okay if count in inverted then we can do inverted count dot append Otherwise, we just create a new list, okay, or containing that particular fruit. So we have already loaded this. We just have to call main uh, for uh, fruits.csv. And here now we have converted uh, the, the other way around. And what we do is uh, based on the keys. Again, we're going to sort the keys. And if we sort the keys now on the inverted dictionary, we're just going to see the number of items uh, increasing uh, as we go down. So we have one stock of these kiwi and banana, two stock of melon and pear, and so forth. So this way we can uh, invert the dictionary as well. And as you can see, it doesn't take that many lines to actually convert uh, from key values to value key pairs. All right, so that's the one example. You can always uh, play around with these codes, uh, which will be provided to you um, as we approach um, the scheduled time where this is supposed to be released. Okay, so let's have a look at some dictionary quiz, just like the sets. So you can pause the video here and try these uh, line by line uh, and observe what happens. You can try to guess what happens before you try each line as well. So assuming now you have tried, what we'll do is just uh, quickly go over uh, each one. So we have this thing called inventory. For my purpose, I just call it I. Uh, we have apple, that is 430. Pears, uh, which is 220. And we have uh, plums, which is 540. So we created our inventory. So we can go inventory of P, so this should return us 
to 20, correct? Right? So we are accessing what is the value associated with the key that we passed in. Okay? And if we try the inventory of 220, um, obviously 220 isn't a key, therefore we're going to get a key error. Okay? Uh, and uh, we can try to say, can, can I pass in uh, multiple keys? Well, obviously this isn't going to work and give us an error because we passed in two items. So what it's going to do is treat it as a tuple and tuple can be a key if it's unique, um, but in this instance, it doesn't exist. So it's going to fail. Okay? And we can always use um, uh, uh, in operator to check uh, whether it exists or not. So this one is going to return us false because it doesn't exist, but it doesn't give us an error. Okay, I dot get uh, if we use the get for some item that doesn't exist, but we don't have the second parameter, we're going to get an error. Uh, sorry, it's going to return if it's going to return us none um, by default. So if we don't specify anything, it's going to give us a none by default. But if you don't want to get a none, then you can specify as a value as a second uh, input parameter that is going to return that instead. Okay i.values, so we already know that values is going to give us a list-like uh, object that containing all the values, so all, all the integers that we have specified up here, okay, and we can always create a new item uh, easily by passing in a new key and value pairs uh, into our dictionary, then this creates that new entry, okay. And of course, keys is the method that you use to uh, retrieve only the keys inside the dictionary. Okay, and we can use this uh, for loop uh, to go through the inventories and um, print it out like this. However, I will not run this one. You can try it on your own. Uh, so, when will you actually tr use dictionaries? Um, as mentioned before, there's quite a lot of uh, applications where you can apply dictionaries into context, uh, but here's some common examples. So, you have a simple key value databases, like um, you have student ID and the details of the students are stored as a tuple, so you can create a dictionary of that. Then by just uh, inquiring about student ID, you can retrieve the student information quickly. Right, uh, indexing of some sort of uh, sorting, maybe some values, pages on which sorting is found in a book. So you can have some word associated with the pages that they appear. So it's kind of like a uh, a glossary um, of words and the appearance on different pages can be useful. Uh, connections of various sort as well. So things like you can have a pairs. Um, so Mary and Peter. Uh, maybe parent of Angus and Gertrude, um, maybe father of Angus is Peter, uh, you can enter things like this, then this can form a relationship um, like links, so you can easily search uh, who is the father of uh, this person and if it exists in the dictionary, it will quickly look those up. Okay, you can even look up like neighbors of cities and so forth. Um, simple objects like points, can also be put into the dictionary. So p um, p of point x 10 y 20 z 30. Then you can easily look up point of x. Uh, it's gonna show us um, p 10 etc. However, um, for something like this three dimensional thing, it's probably better to create objects uh, called points instead of this. However, uh, um, doing some object oriented isn't really covered in this unit, so you don't have to worry about it. And lastly, sparse arrays and matrices can also be stored using dictionaries. So, for example, data 10 equals 10, data 100 equals 2000, and so forth. So, those are all uh, potential use of dictionaries in the context um, uh, in practice. All right, so. Uh, next one is just a summary of useful dictionary operations. Um, mostly it's calling the uh, method name, uh, but we do have some operations like in uh, or for loop, um, but here like a delete, fun uh, delete operations 
or using the clear get item values and keys methods associated with the dictionary. So we have covered all of these, uh, but if you do forget it, you can always look up the help or just reference this uh, table to quickly um, understand what they're trying to do. So in summary, uh, dictionaries have uh, collections of unordered key value pairs. So this is the difference between the sets and dictionaries where sets are individual items but in dictionaries they have uh, key value pairs. Uh, each key must be immutable type but the values associated with each key can be mutable. That means they can be updated or changed uh, freely. Okay. Uh, the set of keys in the dictionary can change, so which means you can always add new keys or remove existing keys. Um, and it's very fast due to hashing, similar properties as the sets that we have seen before. And uh, it has much faster key access than searching key value lists. Uh, and as we've seen a couple of slides back, it has a lot of users in practice as well. So that's it for just going through some examples and the summary of dictionary. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.